So check this out. This scene here doesn't have any lights. This one is a fake light. This blue thing, that is also completely fake light. This one, also fake. In fact, the cubes, they don't even have a lit material. All I did here was having some fun with the dot product. The dot product takes two vectors and multiplies each component with the one of the other vector. Then you take those three numbers and add them together and what you have is a pretty useful float value. Because that float value can be used to determine the relationship between two vectors. In this video I'm going to show you in detail how this works and if you're new to this channel and haven't already, please consider subscribing and of course giving this video a thumbs up is also highly appreciated. The dot quadrat can be visualized by placing a line at a right angle on one of the vectors so that it hits the tip of the other vector. Now we measure the line from the start of the vector to the start of that laser line and then multiply it with the total length of that vector and that is our dot product. Now of course if the total length of our vector were exactly one then we wouldn't have to do that multiplication and so this is why we often use normalized vectors. A normalized vector just means keep the direction but make it so the length is one. Even better when you have two normalized vectors then the dot product can only go from one to minus one. It will be one when they're pointing in the exact same direction, minus one when they're pointing in the opposite direction, and zero when they add a wide angle to each other. Which hopefully you can see here why it makes sense. Wide angle means the start of that blue line and the tip is of course right at the bottom, so it's zero. Note that this isn't really like a linear relationship. So if I rotate this vector at exactly the same speed, and the dot product doesn't change like in a straight zigzag line, but as you can see, it's a sine curve. Now, if we say that one of the vectors is the one that the face is pointing towards, like this plane here, and the second vector is pointing towards the light source, then we can use that to calculate how strong that light source would influence that plane. Because the more direct a light source hits a surface, the stronger it's going to be. And then of course it goes all the way to zero and when we're below zero it means we're behind it so obviously the light source isn't going to hit it at all so we can just disregard that. And yeah now all you have to do is put six of these faces together and you now have a cube that can be lit from all angles you can rotate it doesn't matter and yeah you can also add a bunch of different light sources and of course I'm aware uh, setting the light for every surface of every object with an update loop in Mono Behavior has to be the least efficient way to light your scene. So this is only for demonstration purposes. And I actually, I recommend if you're not that familiar with uh, shader graph shaders, just play around with it in C Sharp. Just understanding the fundamentals, it, it really doesn't matter what language you use. So here I have this class called the custom light controller. It's a mono behavior, sits in the scene, and it has this public method that returns a color. It has a list of all the point lights, and so we can pass in a position and a normal direction. So every face can say, hey, this is where I am, and this is the direction I'm facing at, and then this adjusts for point light. At first, it's gonna give it some ambient color, so this is completely regardless of position and direction. It could be purely black, of course, and then we're going to say for every light in the point lights, we're going to add that color. And of course, we're passing on the position and the direction. And keep in mind, of course, uh, light is additive. So eventually we're going to get to purely white. This is just how light behaves. In the point light, we get the color white. We just pass that on, the position and the direction. And we want to do two things. We actually want to see how close we are to that light source and then see how that should change because it's a point light, so it shouldn't be the same everywhere. And then, of course, we also calculate the intensity. That's the thing we just did with the dot product. So for the intensity based on distance, we only need the position and then we can calculate the distance simply by using vector3.distance, right? Where is this light and where is the position of the thing that would like to receive some of that light? If it's below zero, we can just return that. And otherwise, we're going to do the inverse lerp. I have a range here that I defined how big is the range of that point light. Inverse lerp just says how far are we between zero and that range, and this is where we are. And I want to get a value between zero and one. So it's kind of like proportional, right? If you're right in the middle, we're gonna get 0 0.5. Now, in reality, light follows the inverse square law which means that if you're twice as close to a light source, the intensity is actually getting squared. So it's not linear, it's like this exponential curve. 
but of course we can also do our own th this is why i'm using this intensity over distance which is an animation curve now the name i think is a bit unfortunate because it's really just a curve this is the point light and all there is to it is the color the range and the intensity of the distance which is the light fall off right so i can just grab the range make it smaller and bigger that's a little bit too big and then i can change the light of course the color of it so i don't know maybe red and green next to each other Let's see something like this i think that looks really nice and the intensity of a distance as i mentioned this is just an animation curve so the input that's here zero to one that's what we're plugging in and we're going to say okay if i plug this in i want to get the y value back and this way we can just play around with this right um this would be somewhat more realistic we could also have a much more dramatic fall off we change this to weighted left tangent weighted yes so now we can just maybe like much more dramatic and then i think to go a bit like more more moody you would have like almost like a, a linear fall off something like this right so yeah many many things you can do with that just thought i'd show you that because obviously we're not trying to make like a realistic simulation here so it's a lot more interesting if you can play around with the light and shape it exactly the way you want it to behave as I just mentioned, you don't want to calculate lighting in motor behavior, in update loops, but you, what you really want to do is use a shader. So this is what I just showed you in Shader Web in its most simple form. There's already a node here that can take the normal of every face of your mesh, and then we can pass in a light direction that is just a vector 3. Of course, we normalize it, and as the name suggests, the normal vector is already normalized. And then we can take the dot product. This way we get like the light based on the direction. And then we can just multiply it with a color, put this out here. And now we have this like unlit shader that actually does some light calculations based on everything that you set it up. I think it might also be worth mentioning this is where normal maps come into play. So normal maps have this RGB channel, the RGB, and we take the RGB and adjust the X, Y, and Z of this vector. It's like we're saying, okay, this is the actual normal direction of the mesh of the vertices, but you know what? I would like to pretend that at every pixel that I sample from this here, let's adjust that vector a little bit. And this way we can get like all these tiny bumps and whatever kind of details based on our, like the pixel, the texture basis and we can put that on this flat surface and then of course the light will simply react to this. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feedback, criticism, just drop a comment below. Yeah, please don't forget the thumbs up if you've made it all the way till here. Also, if you, if you have any ideas for that you want me to make a video on, just let me know and yeah, goodbye.